Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. We want to help you change your life today. We want to help you and your loved ones change your lives today. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges, you or a loved one may be dealing with 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. And if we've left you on hold in the past, just tell our call screener and we'll get you first up. We do have lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories all up, uh, videos as well, all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also check out the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can get your products at the wholesale price or in thank you checks associated with having your own business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's an ideal way to start a business. For, offer a one-time $25 fee. You can write off your tax benefits in addition to helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, accelerated aging of the skin, or if you don't want to be dealing with accelerated aging of your skin, prevention is always the best way to address health challenges, particularly skin health challenges. It's always easier to prevent than it is to reverse, although reversal is possible, especially with retinol. Retinol is the only known active ingredient. Retinol and retinoic acid are the only known active ingredients that will not only prevent the signs of aging, but literally reverse the signs of aging once they have occurred. This has been shown over and over again, and I've been working with retinol and retinoic acid for over... Oh, gosh, since 1983, for, since, for 34 years. But just now, you're starting to hear more and more about this super, super important active anti-aging ingredient. If you are using an anti-aging skin product and it does not feature retinol, you're missing the boat, folks. But you need high concentrations of retinol, somewhere around 4 or 5%. That's why I made my Truth Retinol 5% gel, made with not just retinol, but also 25%. Premium fat-soluble, stable vitamin C, moisturizing, skin-softening vitamin C, which is just as important as retinol. In fact, retinol and vitamin C are the two most important active ingredients you could ever put on your skin. And if you're not using both, folks, on a regular, at least regular, ideally daily or several times a day basis, you are truly missing the boat on active anti-aging skincare. But you don't have to miss the boat because you can check out all our vitamin C and retinol products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. 
Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We're talking veggies, vegetables, great source of electrolytes. So is the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, by the way. In fact, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is an electrolyte drink. It's an electrolyte, B vitamin, water-soluble nutrient drink. It's an electrical drink. If you put a voltage meter in your BTT, it's in a Beyond Tangy Tangerine drink, in uh, water and BTT, water and Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that voltage meter is going to register voltage. It's going to move. That tells you you're drinking electricity. That's because of the electrolytes as well as the B vitamins and the vitamin C. Like the B vitamins, like the vitamin C, electrolytes are largely removed from foods when they are processed, when they're heated, when they're cooked, when they're frozen, when they're prepared. And this is why deficiencies in these highly energetic, highly valuable nutrients are not uncommon. Like the B vitamins, we talked about that, uh, this yesterday, like the B vitamins, electrolytes are found in living foods and, or formerly living foods, foods that were recently alive, sprouts, algae, eggs, organ meats, and of course, vegetables. Electrolytes are important for pretty much everything a cell does. They are the electrical energy in a cell. A cell is like a little electrical unit. And diseases are, all, are always going to be linked to electrical disturbances in the cell, especially cancer, by the way. Cancer is a classic example of an electric, a cancer cell is a classic example of an electrically disturbed cell. Electrolytes are important for everything a cell does, but they're especially important for providing the cell with its electrical energy. As the electrolytes move in and move out of a cell, and this process is tightly controlled, as the electrolytes move in and out of a cell, electricity is generated. That's how electricity is generated in a cell, basically. The movement of electrolytes back and forth, back and forth. Now, this back and forth movement depends on the cell membrane, and this makes the cell membrane, the coating on the outside of a cell, really, really important. Cell membrane being composed of fats, and even though we're talking here about the importance of water-soluble nutrients, fats are important too. And it's actually this kind of relationship between the fats on the outside of a cell and the watery electrolytes that move in and out of a cell that really accounts for the electricity that's in a cell. It's the combination of the movement, the flow, if you will, of potassium and sodium and calcium and magnesium. Those are the four most common electrolytes or the four most well-known electrolytes in and out of the cell, crossing the fatty membrane that gives the cell its energy to do its work. So the four most important electrolytes are calcium and magnesium and sodium and potassium. And these things are like medical nutrients. They're surgical nutrients. Chloride, phosphate, sulfate, those are also important. But the main ones are magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. And while many healthcare professionals are dismissive about uh, how important the Mighty 90 essential nutrients are, they got, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We never, they've never been proven. You don't need to supplement with them, blah, blah, blah. And many of them are dismissive about essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, even vitamins. No surgeon, no physician, no healthcare professional doubts the extreme value of the electrolytes. And in the hospital pharmacies, these water-soluble minerals are considered to be medications. Yes, water-soluble electrolytes, which are nutrients, are actually considered to be drugs, medications, as much as they are nutrients in the pharmacy. In hospital pharmacies, you always have vials of magnesium and calcium and sodium and potassium. So in the cell, these electrolytes are, are, are responsible for the conduction of electrical energy, but the balance of the electrolytes is really, really important when it comes to how well the electrical energy flows. It's the, the movement or the flow of the electrolytes is what accounts for the energy, and this flow is super dependent on the balance the balance of sodium to potassium, the balance of calcium to magnesium. You can't have too much compared to the other. You can't have too much potassium compared to the sodium. You can't have too much sodium compared to potassium. Likewise, with the calcium and magnesium, it's all in balance. And this flow, the, the flow, the movement of the electrolytes depends on the balance. The flow is kind of like the, gener the, the flow generates an electrical charge much the same way a battery does. An ordinary battery, take a, just a regular old battery, and our lives are filled with batteries. We couldn't, have, we couldn't have a 21st century lifestyle without batteries. Imagine how many, look around your room right now, see how much battery-powered uh, battery equipment there is. Well, a cell is like a little battery, and it works in much the same way as a battery works. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Right 
Insider, Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining in. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacist uh, and uh, benfuchsarchives.com. Got search engines up at both uh, both websites, benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. All our shows are archived, got six years plus of archived information, all great health information that you're not going to hear on any other radio program because everything I'm talking about is based on my personal experience in combination with the research that I've done. It's coming out of my head plus the research that I've done. It's all based on my 31, uh, 31 years of working as a pharmacist, 34 years of working in the skincare business. And this is my personal information in combination with the research that I've done. It's all up, all the, uh, all the great health information that you hear every day on the Bright Side is up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com in archive format with search engines. You can also purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the eight six uh, call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, got lines open for you. Nobody's on, uh, nobody's on hold. So uh, got all our lines are open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you've got questions about heart disease, electrolytes, veggies, anything we're speaking about here today, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, now's the time to give us a shout, 844-236-6010. So uh, the, uh, the cell, which is the nexus of health or the nexus of disease, all disease being cell disease, is a little electrical critter. It's an electrical organism. It's like a battery. And it generates its electrical charge much like a battery does. A battery, which our 21st century lifestyle could not exist without batteries. Batteries are energy storage devices that generate their electrical charge through the movement of electrolytes. And a cell works exactly the same way. It generates its electrical charge through the movement of electrolytes. And this is why cells can be considered to be little batteries. And this is also why electrolytes and electrolyte balances are so darn important. Sodium and potassium balance, as well as calcium and magnesium balance. And then the whole thing, sodium, potassium, calcium, and, uh, uh, and uh, magnesium, sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium are all balanced with chloride. So you got all these different balances going on and they're all really important. And guess what organ it is that balances or maintains the balance of all these electrolytes? The kidneys. That's the major, well, one of the major roles of the kidneys is to regulate the balance of the electrolytes with a little bit of input from the adrenal glands. So between the adrenals and the renals, ad renals are the, are the glands that sit on top of the renals or the kidneys, renals being the other term for kidneys, the ad renals and the renals control the electrolytes. And yesterday we talked about chronic kidney disease, which is an absolute epidemic, millions and millions, probably 10, maybe, maybe 20 million Americans, a ridiculous amount of Americans, probably more, it might be up to, it might be a 30 or 40 million Americans are dealing with some degree of kidney disease. And it's the kidneys that regulate the electrolytes. Do you think that has an effect on electrolyte balance? Even undiagnosed kidney disease, mild kidney disease, even just poorly functioning kidneys that aren't diseased can affect electrolyte balance negatively or have a negative effect on electrolyte balances. But if you're dealing with full-blown kidney disease, rest assured you're going to have an electrolyte problem. And because electrolytes are involved in the opening and closing of blood vessels, which ultimately are controlled by cells, opening and closing is one of the results of, uh, of the, of the uh, work that a cell does. One of the major effects of electrolyte balances, uh, imbalances in kidney disease is hypertension, high blood pressure. In fact, it could very well be that our epidemic of what is called essential hypertension, some 70% of Americans, believe it or not, this is crazy, a huge number of Americans are dealing with what's called essential hypertension. That means hypertension with no known cause. It's just happening. They call it essential hypertension. They might as well say hypertension, un, uh, uh, hypertension uh, with no known cause. That's what essential hypertension is. It could be, very well could be, that essential hypertension, hypertension, high blood pressure with no known cause is the result of kidney disease or kidney weakness, let's say. Maybe not, you don't want to call it kidney disease, just early stage kidney weakness. By the way, if you have rashes, unexplained rashes, and unexplained itching, that could also be uh, the result of kidney disease, although that doesn't tend to occur until the kidneys are really, really messed up. 
Of course, because electrolytes are, after all, electrical, electrolytes are electrical, they conduct electrical charges, their balance and their levels are going to be especially important for the most highly electrical cells. All cells are going to be electrical, but there are cer uh, certain cells that are more electrical than others, particularly nerve cells and heart cells. These are the most electrical systems in the body, our nervous system and our brain and the heart. So neurons or nerve cells and cardiac cells or heart cells are uber dependent on electrolytes, super dependent on electrolytes, and the heart is extra, extra, extra dependent on electrolytes, and the first sign of electrolyte problems is going to be problems with the circulatory system and, and problems with the heart. The heart is especially dependent and sensitive on electrolyte levels and electrolyte balances. And all the electrolytes are gonna be important for maintaining a heart health function but according to the Encyclopedia of Surgery, potassium is probably the most important cardiac electrolyte, heart electrolyte, because differences in uh, or uh, uh, changes in potassium levels, very tiny little changes in potassium levels compared to other electrolytes can have huge effects on the heart, especially when it comes to sodium, which we get way, way too much of. This balance between potassium and sodium is extra important when it comes to heart health. We get way more sodium than we do potassium. And this is a, this is a new phenomena. Throughout our evolutionary history, for the hundreds of thousands and even millions of years that human beings have been around, there was way more potassium than sodium. That's because potassium is found pretty abundantly in vegetation, pretty abundantly in, in botanicals and plants and vegetables. Sodium, not so much. So our bodies are designed to really, really hone in on sodium not so much potassium because potassium has always been around. So the body's like, oh, well, we got plenty of potassium around, but it's the sodium we really need. So we are really searching for sodium from a, from a brain level. Our brain is always looking for sodium. And because sodium is used as a preservative and sodium is used as a flavoring agent, and sodium is used in all kinds of processed foods, especially processed foods, there's all kinds of sodium everywhere. And because our, our brain is looking for sodium all the time, we're and we end up being way out of balance, sodium to potassium. In fact, according to nutritionists, we should have about four times, uh, we should be at a four to one ratio of potassium to sodium. We should have about four times as much, as much potassium as sodium. And as it turns out, we're exactly the opposite. We get four times more sodium than we do potassium. So we're way over sodiumized and way under potassiumized. And because even tiny little changes can have effects on the heart, it could very well be that our epidemic of heart disease is at least partially related to the fact that we're not getting enough potassium, that we're not getting, that we get too much sodium compared to how much potassium. Out of balance, sodium to potassium can cause heart palpitations, it can cause valve issues, it can cause angina, it can even cause heart attacks. And this is why vials of potassium and vials of sodium as well as vials of magnesium and calcium are always kept in emergency rooms. There's not an emergency room on the planet that doesn't have sodium, sodium and potassium and calcium and magnesium in little vials that get stuck into IV bags. I used to have to make those IV bags. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, IV bags. As I say, these things are not just nutrients, they're medicines. And if you've ever had a heart attack, your life could very well have been saved by them. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with you and your phone calls. 844 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. We do have lines open, 844 If you have questions about the electrolytes, potassium, sodium, heart health issues, anything we're speaking about here today. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions or uh, comments about our true skin health products, formulations, ingredients, the longevity products, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. Hang on if uh, you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a moment. I want to read a couple stories here that... Uh, couple interesting stories here. Gut bacteria metabolism may factor into hypertension. One in three Americans suffers from high blood pressure. One in three Americans suffers from high blood pressure. It's 100 million Americans suffers from high blood pressure. Doctors will tell you that it's genetic. It's in your family. That's, how they That's what they blame essential hypertension on. They say it's genetic. It's in your family. It's not genetic. It's not in your family. It has to do with how you're living your life. 
for better or worse. That's good news because it means we can control our blood pressure by how we live our lives for the most part. Talk about deep breathing. We talk about telling the body to relax or helping the body to relax. You don't want to tell the body to relax. You want to help the body relax, relax your body. That's the best way to lower your blood pressure. Just sit in a hot bath. Hot baths are amazing ways to relax the musculature, the skeletal, musculoskeletal system. And lowering blood pressure follows almost immediately. Almost immediately after you relax your musculoskeletal system, your muscles and your skeleton, almost immediately when you relax the body, your blood pressure will drop. Certainly smoking can raise your blood pressure, so quitting smoking is important. And of course, high sodium, low potassium. Doctors always blame high sodium. That's what they got the, this notion that you got to reduce your sodium. And they're half right. It's not so much that you got to reduce your sodium. Sodium is really important stuff. It's that you got to get it back in balance with the potassium. Not lowering the sodium, it's raising the potassium, or at least getting the potassium back in balance. This is the flaw with this low sodium nonsense. It's not low sodium that, the, that we need to be focusing on. It's raising our potassium by eating more veggies and not eating as much processed food. That's really what the problem is. Anyway, according to this article, gut bacteria also factor into uh, also factor into hypertension. And in studies, when gut bacteria were killed off with antibiotics, patients with hypertension uh, experienced changes in their blood pressure. And when bacteria were transplanted from hypertensive people into normal mice, they got high blood pressure. So they took the bacteria from the hypertensive patients or the hypertensive mice and put it into the non-hypertensive mice. Bingo. The non-hypertensive mice got hypertension. So anyway... What does it say? Gut bacteria? Gut bacteria are, are about the gut. The gut is about digestion. Digestion is about food. All roads lead to food. All roads lead to the digestive tract, the first point on the triangle of disease. I know I ha I, I'm addicted to foods as much as anybody, and as I've said so many times, this is not about beating anybody up for their food choices. This is about power. It's about leverage. It's about taking advantage of our points of power and points of leverage, which means changing the way we eat. If you're dealing with hypertension, you're dealing with cardiovascular health issues, there are so many different ways to improve your health from the comfort of your own kitchen. That's what we're talking about here. Of staying away from the doctor's office and returning to the kitchen, returning to the living room, returning to the couch, returning to things that we can do at home to take care of our blood pressure, to take care of our heart, to take care of our health in general. And oh, by the way, the gym is also important. Weightlifting, American Heart Association now says weightlifting is important for the heart. For years they've told us about aerobic exercise, now they tell us weightlifting is important for the heart. And guess what? Using your creatine when you come home from the gym can also be important for the heart. Using your creatine when you're done with a workout can also be important for the heart. And creatine is great for elderly folks. Creatine, as many of you know, is a very important bodybuilding supplement and weightlifter supplement and athlete supplement. but. If something is important for a bodybuilder and something is important for an athlete, it's probably important for an average, reg every, average, everyday, regular Joe, like you and I, or at least like I. This is from uh, University of Virginia. Uh, or no, I read this one yesterday. Well, I'll read it again. This is from the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Exercise can make cells healthier, promoting longer life study finds. I think I talked about this yesterday. Exercise improves the health of the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the little tiny energy producing factories that are inside a cell. Man, are these things important. Do you know mitochondria actually are not even part of us? They have their own DNA. They're like another creature that has somehow entered into a cell to help the cell utilize oxygen. This is an amazing, amazing phenomenon. Mitochondria have their own genetics. Mitochondria, if you've ever watched uh, any of those crime shows, CSI, they talk about mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA, mitochondrial genetics, is different from regular cell genetics. They have their own genetic profile. That's because they're, they're like a little animal themselves. And it turns out that these little animals that process oxygen, or process, uh, that turn oxygen into energy or use oxygen for energy, they're responsive to exercise. You get more mitochondria, you get better functioning mitochondria, you get stronger mitochondria by getting on a treadmill. Again, demonstrating how much power we have over our health. Do you think drug companies are working on drugs to support mitochondria? Yes, they are. You better believe they are. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're working on it. You'll hear nutritionists talk about nutrients that are important for mitochondria, and they are. Coenzyme Q10 is very important for mitochondrial health. Vitamin E is very important for mitochondrial health. One of my favorite 
uh, nutritional supplements. It's not an essential nutritional supplement, but it's one of my favorites. It's called alpha lipoic acid. We've talked about that periodically on this program. It's a little pricey, but it's really important for mitochondrial health. I'll tell you what's not important or what's awful for the health of the mitochondria, sugar. Sugar is the mitochondria's most deadly enemy. One of the mitochondria's most deadly enemy. Processed fats, another enemy for the mitochondria. Again, all roads lead to the digestive system. All roads lead to food. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's, I think it's time to hit the phones. Let's go to Larry in Indiana. Good morning, Larry. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. I was, um, I'm on a ketogenic and uh, intermittent fasting. Good for you. And um, I've been eating just one meal a day. Um, awesome. I'm concerned... You- I'm not getting enough potassium because I understand you have to have at least 4,700 milligrams of potassium recommended a day. Well, it has to do with how much sodium you're getting. So it's not really, remember, it's the relationship of potassium to sodium. So it's not like one number of how much potassium you need. It depends on how much sodium you're getting in. The more sodium you're getting in, the more potassium you need. So it's not like there's a strict number, but it's more about the balance. So why are you, uh, well, first of all, how did you know about the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting? What, What made you do that? It's. I've, I've heard it from you talking about it. I've also. There's a lot of experts on on YouTube that are talking about talking about it now, right? Uh, yeah. Well, so you're, you're a smart man, now. Larry. Did, did you have a heart problem or any other problem, or you just just want? Yeah, to Yeah, yeah. I've got hypertension, and you know, okay. I'm trying to just improve my health altogether. I've lost a lot of weight, but uh, good for you. Yeah, good for you. You recommend the ketogenic yeah. diet for other folks and and intermittent fasting. Say that. Say that again. Would you recommend it for other people? Yeah, it's the quickest way to uh, lose weight. Uh, it's the you just feel better, you get more energy. Uh, it's it's just so many benefits, you know. <laughs> I love it, you know, because I talk about the benefits on this. Pro- I've been talking about it for years on the program theoretically, but I love it when people actually experienced it. So you're more of an expert than I am when it comes to the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting because you've actually experienced the benefits. You actually reverse uh, reverse the markers of illness. Hey, uh, hang on, Larry. Got to take a break, and then I'll tell you about. We'll talk a little bit about potassium as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We shall return with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Mr. Larry in Indiana. You there, Larry? Yes. Um, okay, so I, ketogenic I eat diet. a lot of sea salt. I like sea salt um, on veggies you. and stuff like that. So I think I need more potassium. So what I was doing, I was taking potassium citrate capsules and putting them in a drink. I was wondering um, if you recommend that because no, they're only 99 uh, milligrams. Yeah, but you know, it's just a, it's not it's not a balanced way to get your potassium. I'd be doing more veggies. That's that's basically how I would be. Are you doing a lot of veggies? Avocados, squash, spinach. Yeah, kind of um, not a lot because I'm only eating one meal a day. But uh, you, you, you know, know you can I'm trying snack. to increase potassium. You can snack on these things uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, if you're only eating one meal a day, you can still, you know, try to keep it. Instead of you saying one meal a day, just say I'm only going to eat between 11 and 4 kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So give yourself a, a window, a, a time window of what you're going to eat. And then you can snack on, the, uh, on your veggies during the day. And that's not going to throw off the ketogenic diet at all. And as long as okay. you keep your eating within a window, uh, you'll still go into ketosis. And uh, if you fat, you know, you're not going to get any fast, obviously, but you'll still keep yourself in ketosis if you keep, give yourself a five hour, say a four or five hour window with, within which you eat. So instead of one meal a day, just say, okay, I'm only going to eat between 11 and four or between 11 and three. And then throw in uh, uh, veggies, beans. If you can do beans, they're, they're not exactly ketogenic, but you can, uh, if, you're, if you're eating beans, they're good sources of potassium. Bananas, everyone knows about bananas and potassium. Mo- mostly it's veggies, though. And veggies aren't going to uh, throw off ketosis. I'm a little bit leery of the uh, medication, like KCL, potassium chloride uh, pills, or not medication necessarily, but uh, supplements that you take, because it may throw off your potassium to sodium balance. You'll have to see how you do. But it's... It's, it's a more appropriate way to get your potassium from foods. 
Okay. Also, All Beyond right. Tangy Tangerine is a great source of potassium, and that is balanced with the other electrolytes, the magnesium and calcium and, and sodium. Remember, it's the balance that counts, not the frank number, unless you're super deficient. But for most of us, it's the balance, not the absolute number of milligrams of potassium that you're getting daily. All right? All right. Does that help? Okay. Hey, congratulations, yeah. man. That's awesome news. You, you not only lost weight, buddy, and you're not only feeling better, but you added years to your life. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Take care, man. Hey, I'm going to be in Indianapolis in a couple of weeks. Are you anywhere near Indianapolis? I'm about an hour and a half away. I'm, I'm up toward uh, Fort Wayne. Are you doing longevity at all? No, I'm not, but um, okay. I do other supplements, but um, I'm very familiar with them. <laughs> well, if you want to come by, I'll be doing a talk on uh, November the 4th, Saturday, November 4th, in Indianapolis at the Jamboree. Oh. Just awesome. Google Jamboree. I'd love to meet you. Oh, I'd love to all see right. you. And come, right. come by and say hi. If, you come, if you're out there, make sure you come by and say hi. All right. Thank you. Okay, Larry. Take care, buddy. Have a good day. All right. Let's go to Shirley in California. Good morning, Shirley. Welcome to the bright side. Let me see. Get Shirley here. Hi, Shirley. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Good yes, morning. Um, I, I'm so glad that you're talking about this topic because um, it, it resonates with me. As far, good. I, had two, I had two heart attacks um, in two years, and, of course, I... It was based on arrhythmia, I believe, but um, okay. of course, you know, I refused to all the hardware they wanted to install, you know, my chest and um, and all those. They wanted to put a pacemaker yeah. in there? Oh, well, you know, without, oh. and so I knew instinctively that it wasn't, you know, structural, and I was right, because the CT scan showed that I had absolutely no blockage and no um, uh, plaque in, in the doctor. So it could, have been, it could have been an electrolyte deficiency, for all you know. <laughs> yes. And so I looked at my blood work, and I said to myself, it just came to me like an epiphany. I go, look at my sodium had been low for years. There you Cost go. Low sodium. And then the potassium, not as low, but on the low end as well. So you're so out of balance. I, I was out of balance, and who knows for how many years, you know. And so I said that when I talked to the cardiologist at a follow-up, you know, he almost, he was almost poo-pooing it. I was like, but I believe this is it. It's my, it's my, but my blood work. So, you know, you know, I just. Anyway. So what are you doing? So I, went, so I went to my naturopath and that I've been to going to for years, and you know he agreed, and that we started on potassium, magnesium, and um, potassium, magnesium, and uh, what was the other? Well, calcium, sodium, yeah. calcium, calcium. Okay. Well, not really. See now, my po he said that, and I'm wondering if you would agree. He said the potassium is more important than the sodium. And nah, then I'm not I you know, I know where he's going with that, and potassium is super-duper important, but it's, I don't like thinking of it that way. It's the balance. It's the balance. You want about four parts potassium to, for every part sodium, and in that way, potassium is more important because you need more potassium. But I don't like saying one's more important than the other. They're all important, and that's why vegetables are so good because vegetables are balanced. They have everything you need. That's why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is so important. It's balanced. It's got everything you need. When you start throwing off the balance by taking just potassium or, or just uh, just calcium or just magnesium, that, that's where you start to run into trouble. So I don't like saying one nutrient is more important than the other. It's the balance. They're a team. Third base is not more important than shortstop. If you have, if you're missing a third baseman, you're not going to win many games, no matter how good the other eight players are. You know, it's not like one position on the team is more important. It's a team. They're all important. That's the nature of a team. Nutrients are a team. There's not one nutrient that's more important than the other. But I, I commend you for understanding how uh, important electrolytes are in general, as well as your naturopath. Go with veggies. Go with a, as much veggies as you can. Veggie juices. Get a Vitamix. Vitamix is a great way to get the electrolytes in your system quickly. Juices in general are going to get you the electrolytes really quickly. Uh, so I'd be juicing every day if I were you, Shirley. Yeah, uh, Vitamix juice. If, if I'm taking 560 milligrams of the potassium, and, I, and I'm not specifically taking salt water, although I have, I'm wondering how to balance that because I am craving salt. Like I can eat a bag of potatoes. Get Google yourself some sea salt. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what you should do, my opinion. This is my, my suggestion. Get some Celtic sea salt or some uh, Himalayan salt, like a quality salt. Put a teaspoon in water and then a sip teaspoon? on it. A teaspoon of this Celtic sea salt in water and sip on it very slowly. If the, the Probably the first little bit is going to taste super delicious to you, right? Huh. Then yeah. as you sip more and more, it's going to taste less and less delicious. And then you're going to reach a point where you don't want any more. Bingo. You've had enough salt. You've had enough sodium. Does oh. that make sense? I see. So you're sipping like a cup of water? 
One like put a teaspoon in a cup of water, even a couple teaspoons, just get it real salty. And you'll notice that the first sip of that is super delicious, especially if you're an athlete or especially if you're under stress of any kind, or especially if you've been um, out working in the yard and you're sweating a lot. The first couple of sips of, uh, of salt water are going to be super delicious. And then gradually it's going to be less and less delicious and you'll reach a point where you don't want any more salt. This is not only great for people who are working out a lot or are experiencing low sodium levels, but it's also also good for people who are craving salty foods. So if, because a, a lot of our salty foods come combined with, with, with bad fat and with carbohydrates, things like pizza and pretzels and potato chips. If you're craving any of these foods, using this salt water technique is a great way to wean yourself off of those foods and give your body the salt it needs, the sodium it needs, without having to interact with the nasty pizza fat or the, or the, or the carbohydrates from your pretzels or your potato chips. Does that make sense? It's a, w a great way to get salt without having to have the other, uh, other, kind of foods, uh, other kind of food components that usually come with salt. Okay, so I don't okay. do it every day. I would just do it by Whenever you feel like it, whenever you're craving salt, trust your body. Do it every okay. morning, and if, you, if you're repulsed by the idea, that's your body talking to you. Don't do it. But if the okay. salt, if it sounds good, and if this first sip is good, you needed it. Right, right. Okay. Thanks okay. so much. I went to today. Thanks so much, Dr. Th thanks, Shirley. Good to Bye. talk to you. Have a great day. All right. Underwear guy, you get the last word, my friend. What's going on, John? Words. Okay, real quickly, um, on vitamins, when it says, when you look at the label, it says, say, for instance, calcium. There's yeah. calcium carbonate, which is usually what the cheap stores cheap sell. Stuff. And then That's there's, right. Yeah, there's calcium citrate, magnesium yeah. as oxide, yeah. magnesium citrate. You want to know the differences what, in all those? Yeah, exactly. That's a great that, question. That's a great question. They're very important, those differences. The second word after a mineral, and minerals always will have a second word after them. There's no mineral supplements that you can get that don't have a second word after them. Either that second word could be colloidal. Sometimes the second word is before. Uh, but there will always be two words. You'll see colloidal magnesium, or you'll see magnesium sulfate, or magnesium glycinate. That word that's associated with the mineral is a key indicator for how well that mineral is absorbed. Colloidal minerals are typically absorbed very well from the digestive tract. The second, if, if the word is after the mineral, as in magnesium oxide, carbonate, glycinate, calcium carbonate, that tells you also how well the, uh, how well the mineral will, will be absorbed. Carbonates are typically not absorbed very effectively. Um, oxides also not absorbed very effectively. Amino acids that come after the second word, like glycine or glycinate, those are absorbed much, much, much better. Picolinate is much better absorbed. Uh, monomethionine or methionine, much better absorbed. So that second word is a key indicator for you. Personally, the carbonates and the oxides, in my opinion, you know, they're cheap for a reason they're cheap. They're not very well absorbed. John, why don't you call back to, if you can call back tomorrow, we can go into it a little bit more in depth. I only got about 20 seconds here. Thanks for your call, John. Appreciate it. Have a great day, man. All right, that's all the time we have for today, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. Yeah.